welcome guys. Thank you so much for doing this show with me today. How is everybody doing? Doing great, great, great. great. Yeah, yeah, great. Good, good. Excited to be here. Uh, I am. I. You have no idea how excited I am for this. So I'm going to start out by jumping in at the deep end, asking questions to the whole team, which you can either answer individually or as a group. But these will probably be some of the questions that are the foremost on the minds of fans and everyone who has been following the research done on the ranch and the TV show, The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. So, Brian, we'll start off with you. How close are you to figuring out the origin of everything? That's going on at the ranch. <laughs> yeah, Dragon. How close yeah. are you? <laughs> wow. Um, let's see, how close is the Earth to the Sun? I don't know. I mean, it's. Are are we hopefully finding clues to maybe getting a few answers and figuring out a few things? I would say, maybe. But I, to figure out exactly what's going on at the ranch, I don't like personally. I. I'm not very close. Maybe you guys feel like you're closer. I, I don't know. It's, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a complex thing that seems like it comes from every direction. And as soon as you think you've found one direction it's coming from, it switches and comes from another direction. And the nature of it is still extremely unknown. And so, yeah, how close are we? I'd say not very close. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> No, we're Travel. closer than we are closer than anyone's ever been. Well, I would say that, but I don't know how close that is. That could still be a really long <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, it sure can be. Well, I think we have an estimate of 93 million miles, right? At least. That's not too bad if you look at it from a different planet, right? Like Pluto, it's well, a lot farther from the sun. So it's a little perspective right. at the end of the day. We could be a universe away or several universes away. <laughs> Seems like it, but I think it's really exciting to see the progress that you guys are making on the TV show, but also on the Insider Project as well. So, uh, Eric, this question's for you and for anyone else that wants to answer, but for, first off for you, Eric. Have you noticed any correlation between upticks in activity at the ranch and astronomical phenomena such as solar storms and lunar eclipses? Yeah, you know, I... I Unusual activity would have to include, you know, things that happen with the, the instrumentation. And interestingly, recently we've had these, um, we've had quite a bit of solar activity. In fact, it's a very timely question. And we've been seeing these streaks of light. Um, you know, I get the feeling that we've got uh, high energy particles hitting the, the, the imaging sensors in our cameras. And what's amazing is, I'll tell you what, what's really exciting about this is these are like one frame events, you know, like a 30th of a second. And uh, those who are participating in the insider program who are watching with us actually notice these one frame events and bring them to my attention. So, you know, that's one example. Um, more generally, uh, I, I can't say that as, as far as the, uh, the stuff for which the ranch is most famous, I can't say that I've seen anything correlative, you know, in that set with solar activity. And Caleb, what about yourself? You're always walking outside, walking around the ranch, interacting with others. Have you noticed anything with the astronomical phenomenon, any upticks in activity? Uh, anything like, I, I think what uh, might be alluded to, like what Eric was just saying with what the ranch is known for. I haven't seen really anything that's like stuck out per se, Um you know, it, it's kind of more the subtle things, you know, the last couple weeks um, or last couple months. There's been a couple times where I've talked to Eric if he'd noticed anything going on strange on the ranch because I've had things that I, I wasn't sure of, like at my house and just seeing if he'd heard anybody from anybody else on the team asking if he'd had anything. And I think there was like one time last couple of months that there may have been some correlation with some stuff, but that's one of those things that we've talked about in a lot of things is like, how do we really know, you know, is that just, you know, are we just trying to explain something away? I, I, I don't know. But uh, what I've have found interesting in regards to like the insiders is I get messages pretty frequently in, in regards to people who have become recent uh, in the insider program, experiencing things at their house. And now, I've also spoken to a couple uh, of our insiders who have been around for a long time and, and they've confided that they've had 
some pretty uh, out out there, like if you can hardly believe it, stuff happened at their house. Now that they've been on it for a while, and so that's you know that's been point of discussion, and it's stuff that's very similar to what we've as a team have experienced uh, at our own homes, and, and that we've talked amongst ourselves. Travis, is it something that you would expect that there should be an uptick with solar storms, given the magnetic and electrical anomalies that occur on the property? Uh, well, I would say that anybody's guess uh, would be as good as anybody else's guess on that, because we have no idea what the phenomena is. I mean, we honestly have zero idea what the phenomena is. We're, we, it took us four years really to determine the phenomena is real, right? I mean, we all kind of, we had experienced it uh, and, and, and felt like, okay, it was real. And we had anecdotal evidence that it was real because weird things happened to us. But we have scientific evidence now that it's real. Now, the next thing is figure out what it is. And, and I think we're just miles from that. And, and to suggest that a coronal mass ejection is going to alter the phenomena or, or whatever. I mean, that, we haven't seen any data, like Eric says. That, that suggests that it is connected. Now, this next question is an open question for all of you. And Thomas, we'll start with you. Do you feel that you are never alone on the ranch? And to clarify that, I'm talking about the feeling of being observed by a sentient intelligence, call it the trickster intelligence or the invisible eyes of a group of entities. How many of you perceive that the intelligence is omnipresent? I, uh, I, I guess I would say that, uh, yeah, anytime I'm on this property, I just assume that, uh, I guess I'm not by myself. I mean, I don't, I don't know how else to explain it other than to say that thoughts always in the back of my mind as to, um, <clears throat> I always have to have a heightened sense of awareness while I'm here. And, and then, you know, the question is, is that heightened sense of awareness, you know, is that what I'm feeling that makes me feel like I'm being watched or is there actually something there? I, I don't know. That's a really good point to make. Is it you that's feeling that or is there something adding to that? Brian, what about yourself? Um, there's definitely times when I feel like, you know, you get that feeling of being watched, that uneasy feeling of having someone watching you aside from Eric on the surveillance cameras. <laughs> Um, but, uh, as far as some sort of omnipresence type of a thing, I, it's hard for me to say, um, most of the time I feel at peace and, and don't really feel that feeling, but there has definitely been times when, you know, the hair on the back of your neck will stand on end or something like that. And you just feel like there's something or someone there that seems to be watching you. That's a very uncomfortable feeling, but, uh, you know. There's definitely a presence of some sort, what the origin of it is, what the nature of it is. I don't know, but um, I would say that there's absolutely um, some sort of a presence or intelligence there. We've just witnessed way too many things to think otherwise. Well, you are the very first person to say that you feel peaceful when on the ranch. Now, I have heard that you are the repellent, that if you don't want anything bad happening to you, you got to stand next to, to Dragon so that you're going to be safe and okay. <laughs> but as for everyone else, um, from my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you don't usually have a peaceful feeling. But <laughs> Travis, what about yourself? Well, I have to agree that Dragon is repellent. In, in very, very repellent. Yes, I am. Yep, yep. That's true. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, but since you, 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 you brought it up, so. Uh, hey, but no, seriously, uh, he does seem to uh, have a, a a force bubble around him that when he's around, things a lot of times don't happen, and then when he walks away, it's like suddenly it happens. It's like when Clark Kent re leaves the room, and then Superman shows up, right? Uh, so uh, <laughs> we're, we're wondering about that. But, uh, uh, but, but seriously, there have been some, some times uh, where I've been really freaked out. And, uh, uh, and actually, I've had days, one day particularly, where all of us actually, uh, we got up that morning, we said, uh, you know, we just don't want to be here today. And, and I had that one day that I literally, so when I got out of bed, I was getting in the, in the Jeep and driving to the airport and flying home and wasn't coming back and uh, forced myself to keep moving forward. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I did. Um, 
and, and there are times where you, there's well i have a phenomena that happens on my camper trailer uh often it sounds like somebody's outside banging on the wall of the trailer uh, or like a kid playing a, a ball bouncing the ball against the trailer and we've got the sound recorded and we've got cameras everywhere and we've walked around everywhere looking for it we can't find it and it's, and it's recurring so uh you know that kind of stuff it freaks i mean we look for everything birds flying into it big bugs bats you name it but you can't find a cause for it so i mean things like that tend to uh keep you up at night it's really interesting that you use the descriptive descriptive term of stating it was a kid playing with a ball do you think in this case with the things that you are hearing that bang against your trailer is it a type of trickster intelligence like a child or something that we don't understand yet i i don't want to uh, put any uh kind of uh answer there just because i don't have any answer all i know is that it, it's about that repetitive uh kind of sequence that you've seen kids with a ball bouncing this wall and catching it then bouncing again that's about the sort of time between the the taps on the wall and the, and the trailer physically shakes. I mean, Dragon was in there one night when it happened and the trailer, you can feel it. Something's hitting the trailer. And, uh, you know, for a while I thought, you know, maybe it was the jacks that hold the trailer steady were sinking into the dirt or shifting or the wind. It, 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 we've never been able to figure out what it is. And, and it, it's a little freaky. Sometimes it'll last just a few times and sometimes it'll last for hours. What? Hours. That's you know, that does, that does remind me, though, um, one of the first times that I got called out here at night, <clears throat> we had uh, an elderly set of caretakers that were living in the ranch house. And uh, and the lady called me. It was close to midnight. And I've shared this story publicly before, but she was terrified and claimed that somebody was throwing a ball against the front of the ranch house. Mm -hmm. Now, that happened to be on a Monday night because uh Jim Morse and I had been here visiting them earlier in the day. We'd left, you know, around 5 or 6 p.m. when it was still light. And that was the first thing I noticed when I pulled up to the house was that there was a basketball that had been sitting in the little flower planter next to the door. And that ball was sitting out in the yard. And, and you know, I always at the time, I just assumed that there was some high school kids or somebody out here causing problems and throwing that ball. But. You know, ever since hearing what Travis has had happen to his camper out there, his trailer out there, it, it makes me wonder. <clears throat> it makes me wonder if it really was somebody throwing that ball against the house. It sounds crazy, but, you know, was it something rather than someone? I, 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 that's often lingered in the back of my head is as because I never I searched and searched and never found any sign of anybody being around the place. And if it were to be a person, that would be a consistent joke just going on for days, if not years, from what I'm understanding. And you're gonna be you're gonna be you need to be really persistent to do something like that continuously. But Eric, for yourself, someone that's always in the command center, looking at all of the cameras, really trying to look at everything that you can on the ranch, when you're sitting down on your very comfy looking desk chair do you ever feel like someone's watching you from behind well yeah you know i i can i can certainly relate to what's been said so far about uh the feeling that you're not alone um you know i'll add something to what's been shared you know i had the i had the distinct impression as recently as uh, last fall that there was an animal uh banging into what would be the north east corner of the command center i could swear there was there was something i thought maybe there was a deer that had lost its mind uh banging into this into the structure and uh so you spoke of the cameras of course i go right to the cameras you know looking around the perimeter of the, of the building i'm not poking my head out there um and uh, don't have to and, and you know and i see nothing and i think all right well it's clear and i go sit down in that not so comfy chair and uh <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 then it starts again and i'm thinking what is going on here and so go back to the cameras no it's not there um even to the point of braving sticking my head out the door until it you know after a third or fourth time that happens i'm just closing the door locking myself in here locking the steel door on the on the control room sitting there clutching onto a shotgun waiting for this noise to stop <laughs> 
Uh, that's well, happened. You know, uh, that's happened a few Eric, times. Maybe, maybe it uh, since my trailer was moved at the time, it needed some place to go, and it, it went to your your place, man. <laughs> Take it home with you, Travis. No, <laughs> I'm already tonight. For some reason, my camera. I don't know if you guys have noticed. It's been going in and out, and I've been having to keep adjusting the gamma on it. It's, uh -huh. it's weird. It's, yeah, it's, it's, I've used this camera a billion times. I mean, darn. Jeez. I don't know if you remember this, Eric, or not, but we actually had something that was, it was kind of a series of interesting events, if you will, that we caught. And this and the insiders actually pointed this out. And I, you know, uh, I don't know if you remember this. And this was, I want to say December or January, okay. somewhere in there. But uh, I, it was, I was out there. It was later at night. Um, and you were inside the inner sanctum there. And I was over by the, I think I was actually sitting at the table and I heard something. So I got up and it sounded like somebody was at the door and I was like, and it was, you know, I just, I, I grabbed my pistol and everything and went over and I was actually looking at the door and I actually remember seeing the door handle being like manipulated by something or, you know, and I was like, who yeah. the heck's out there? I was thinking Tom was like showing up and was trying to unlock it at first, you know? Um, and, but the door was locked. I, I, you know, you can see how the, um, the, the little nub on the door handle was right. And, and I literally sat there watching that thing and I got that feeling like, what the heck? And like hair on my neck stood up, you know, and I, I'm not as, I guess, smart <laughs> or as cautious maybe, but, um, I remember kind of going, oh man, I got to go out there now and like look around, you know? So I opened the door and I pretty much same, same kind of situation that you and I, when we saw whatever it was, Travis had my gun out, my, my flashlights and stuff. And I was looking all over the place. And like two weeks later, all the insiders were talking about something that they had seen at the homestead on the, on that day. And I got on and I was went through the uh, video footage. I want to say it's on the spreadsheet now, but they all were also talking about how they had seen lights in the trees and stuff at the command center. I was like, yeah, that was me flashing my, looking for something, you know, cause I heard something at the door. So it's, I don't know. What do you make of that? Because they, they, and they actually have like the series of all that happening. They saw something at Homestead too. And then one of them noticed, said they noticed something in the sky in one of the cameras that was facing towards Homestead too. And then you see my light coming out, flashing and looking and walking around and stuff. So it's like, we've, we've kind of had that caught that, you know, if you will, on camera. That, there that's was nothing kind of, uh, really, really similar, Caleb, to when we had the predator thing, whatever that's what we call it. We don't know what it was, but the thing yeah. that was kind of shimmery, orangish, bright thing. And yeah. uh, we saw it, we chased it, we looked at it, and it took off. And the only thing we saw in the cameras was us running around with the flashlights. And <laughs> and uh, so it makes it really makes uh, me and Eric uh, and the guys talk about is it. Is it an actual physical manifestation or is it some kind of interior uh, brain affecting manifestation, you know, a hallucination like phenomena? So we don't know if, if it's yeah. something real. But the leaves moved and when weeds moved, when it you know went away toward a direction because we took off after or we both went in the same direction like it went that way. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of like the same thing there is where it was at, you think we'd have seen something in the mud because it was right there by the canal and, and yeah, from no we, tracks. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. but same thing as this last, this incident I just was talking about, there was snow on the ground and it was pretty, pretty fresh. And, and I looked around and I could see my footprints. I could see, you know, the tracks from my vehicle and stuff, mm -hmm. but there was nothing else. There was nothing else. Uh, and maybe, maybe have to go back and look, but I want to say there was snow on the ground and it was, and it was kind of, I know it was cold. So, but I didn't, I didn't remember seeing anything that made me go, oh, something was out here like an animal or something. Or as, as you said, Travis, with the predator type entity, maybe entity is interdimensional and just slightly out of coincidence with our plane of existence, which leads me to my next question. And it's been mentioned that we're a long way off from figuring out what is behind all the phenomena there. But 
I've had a lot of discussions, some of them with Navajo tribal members and others with academics about what's going on at the ranch. And I've often focused on the topic of portals to other realms or dimensions. And on the science side of things, I've been told that there are certain quantum mechanics theories that point to the strong possibility of our dimension coexisting alongside a limitless amount of other universes or dimensions, and that in essence, they overlap each other. Then the Navajo tribal members I've spoken to have told me about about how their um, ancient beliefs correspond to there being many spirit worlds, animal spirit worlds, and realms that are just beyond our imagination, yet are overlapping with ours. And all that being said to ask, have any of you suspected that there is something there on the periphery of your vision and overall senses, I guess, that's kind of like out of the corner of my eye thing to the point that you believe that you are sharing the same space with either non-human technology or entities that are occupying another dimension and that the veil between realms is thin or broken in areas on the ranch. I think that was that was an awesome explanation. I, I like that a lot. Um, you know, I've look, I don't know whether it's just my own mind, whatever. I've always kind of held, and this is just my own opinion, that it's easier for me to believe that it's an interdimensional thing than it is little gray people from outer space or whatever coming down in spaceships. Um, it makes more sense to me. Uh, it goes along with my own belief system of, you know, multiple worlds out there that we can't see things of that nature. So um, that makes the most sense to me. And when you've heard stories, not that we've seen these portals open up, per se, you know, where you can see another skyline or another dimension on the other side. Um, but, you know, it's been talked about in, you know, by previous people and in books and things like that. So, you know, for me, uh, that's a that's a more plausible explanation than, you know, some flying saucer coming down from another planet. But that's just myself. Travis, what about you? Um. Well, I don't know that one's more plausible than the other. Uh, they're both they're both plausible uh, possibilities that, you know, there's 10 to the 22 stars in this universe. And so there's likely to be all sorts of life out there. I mean, even if, you know, fractions of fractions of fractions of fractions of those stars have life in it, that's still a lot of life. Uh, and then, you know, the universe has been around for 13.8 billion years. There's plenty of time for them to develop starships and flying saucers and, 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 you know, portal guns, portal transporters, you know, who knows what, right? Anything you can think of. And, and then there's the quantum physics, many worlds theorem, the, the possibility of the multiverse, like in science fiction. And, and who's to say that, or, or even in ancient mythology, uh, you know, the Norse mythology uh, of the Yggdrasil, the tree of life, there's at least nine realms and, and then one on top of that, of, of Valhalla, uh, then uh, there was the Hindu Vishnu, who uh, every time Vishnu would uh, uh, dream, he would exhale a bead of sweat that uh, within that bead was a new universe, and every dream he had was another universe. So it's plenty of religions and theologies and mythologies and ideologies for for the multiversal concept or uh, even simulation theory. I mean, uh, think about how many different games you can play from one server. And uh, so I, I don't see there being necessarily a requirement of the answer being one or the other. The answer might be some mix of a whole bunch of things. And uh, remember, we only see this much of the, vis of the electromagnetic spectrum, right? We see the rainbow. We can't feel or detect or smell microwaves or radio waves for whatever reason. We can only see uh, visible light. And who knows, there could be things standing around me right now that are outside of my realm of senses, and, and I have no way to detect them unless I build some kind of detector. So we have no idea what reality really is. We only see a reality that enabled us as a species to survive, not necessarily things that we had that we wanted to see or could see, just what we needed to see. 
That's a very interesting point. And Thomas, you've been someone that has spoken to a lot of people. You've had a lot of your own experiences. What are your thoughts on this current conversation that we're having? Well, I know that you asked in your, your question whether, you know, we'd caught anything out of the corner of our, our eye or, um, you know, there's a number of times where I've thought I saw something. Um, and, and when I looked or, or paid attention to that spot, what I thought was there wasn't there. Um, there are a couple specific experiences I've had. Um, one of them, uh, I had actually, I had my wife with me and we were down <clears throat> on the trail that goes to the south and there's a part of it that drops down and goes through the creek. And we were down in the bottom right there by the creek when my wife alerted me that there was a pack of dogs up on the top looking down at us. And uh, of course, you know, after what's happened with alpacas and, and that various things, I'm very uh, alert and aware of when we have packs of animals running around on the property. It, uh, it's my job to make sure we protect the livestock and, and uh, our, our animals here. So <clears throat> being armed, I immediately ran up there and this, this particular experience happened right after a rainstorm. So the ground was very soft, very muddy. Uh, we ran to the top of the hill where, where the dogs were at. And not only could we not find the dogs, but there was absolutely not a single track up there to indicate that dogs had been there. So what was it that we saw? You know, I don't know. And I've had several experiences in differing fashions, but similar <clears throat> nature. Uh, of those type of things. So to your question, yes, I've seen things that I thought I was seeing, you know, Travis alluded earlier, though, we don't know if it's something that's just happening inside of our head, you know, so it's hard to say. Um, it, it's hard. To, <laughs> it's hard to know what we're exactly seeing. I mean, I leave this ranch so many times wondering if I'm losing my grip on reality. So uh, I don't know. I uh, came to that ranch the first time thinking you had. <laughs> <laughs> and now my grip just as loose as yours, man. <laughs> well, then it, it that right there makes you question what really is reality? Is it about that perspective? Is it about the way that we saw it as a child and then it changed the way we look at it into adulthood? that right there I feel like is very difficult to answer and maybe Eric you can you can enlighten us on this how wait, has wait, your Christina do I understand you're asking me what reality is listen I don't know if there's another human being who's ever spent more time alone on this ranch you are asking the wrong person <laughs> So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Eric. How has your perspective changed on the world in the in the conspiracies and in the, the UFO phenomenon and the paranormal since you started working at the ranch? Yeah, you know, I, I don't think of myself as a, as a conspiratorial minded person. I've never really bought into uh, that that approach to this problem set. Um. You know, when you talk about change, I assume you mean since I began uh, working with the ranch and honestly, before before 2016, um, I can't say that I had much interest concerning this, the UFO question. I mean, yeah, it's it's mildly interesting, but I wasn't as consummate as as many people whom I've met since. Um, I, I don't yeah, I know that my outlook on those things has changed, but I'll tell you. <laughs> um, I mean, okay, so yeah, sure. My outlook on those things has changed. Um, but <laughs> Why are you guys giggling? What am I? What am I missing here? Because he was trying to tiptoe around it, and finally said, "Fine, fine, okay." Yeah, yeah. Fine, crazy. Stop. It's basically what we're getting at. He wanted to tiptoe around it so bad, and he just couldn't. And then he stepped right in the middle of it. It was fantastic. Uh, yeah, I did that on purpose, guys. Yeah, I like to gather great. it up first before I stomp in it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a cat playing with a mouse, Eric. Oh, my goodness. Um, look, no, uh, seriously. We don't, you know, whatever uh, members of my family would bring up the whole UFO topic when I was growing up as a you know, as a young man, I, I'd just roll my eyes and walk away. I'd say, this is not, a, this is not something I want to engage. 
Uh, but but yeah, we have we we've, we've seen some things that are in fact more interesting uh, than the UFO question. And it goes right into some of the stuff we sort of talked about already: the perceptual side of things, the cognitive side of things. What's the role of the observer in in all this high strangeness that we're seeing? There's some really suggestive stuff going on. Let me give you one one example. You know, you you, you spoke, Christina, about seeing things out of the corner of your eye. I've had that, I had that experience four times just today, uh, early this morning. Um, you know, and at one point today, I was I had the opportunity to um, to discuss by reading some some excerpts from a particular book that was written by a pair of Navajo authors about a certain aspect of the of the Skinwalker um, tradition as well as the witchcraft and so forth. And we were reading a, a specific section, which I guess I would have to characterize as dark. And I, you know, I don't, I don't think I signaled to anyone what was going on, but at several points, you know, I was interrupted by the perception of some uh, dark something out of the corner of my eye uh, moving uh, there in the, in the, in the control room with me. And, you know, again, the question is, could that just be because I'm sleep deprived? Uh, could it be that I'm that suggestible by, you know, having read through this material or is there in fact something being invoked when I together with several of the insiders and concentrating on this subject. And Eric, what time was that? What time did that happen to you? We can we can we can find out. It's when we it's when I began. It was um you have to understand I really I, I've been up all night. Um so I haven't okay, kept what, what new? What's when, when when have you not been up all night? Yeah, um, yeah, but that, that, would have, years. that would have uh, that would have been. You're asking a guy that doesn't even know what day of the week it is. I mean, he needs yeah. so consumed. Okay, okay, I'm thinking it's it's like t uh, ten or eleven this morning. Why are you asking this? Because okay. that's when that uh, vision of not be popped in my head, and I, I was watching uh, Picard this morning, and that was exactly the time I was watching it. And then, so then I saw the whiteboard in my head, and you're in the shop, and uh -huh. the not be thing with all my writing on it. it. Yeah, and that's when I, I I thought of that, and it's, that's so weird. And so I was wondering, you know, we've been talking about this remote viewing thing. How uh -huh. if someone is remote viewing you, they might be leaving a trace that's detectable. Yeah. What if I was somehow seeing the room and didn't realize I was doing it? Well, how did you sleep yeah. last night, Travis? I haven't slept since I started that prednisone on, on, on Monday. Okay. I have okay. slept like, you know, two hours. I, I've had a, I've had bronchitis, and I've been taking uh, antibiotics and prednisone, and I've just been like, ah, like a cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Now, how is that? <clears throat> how do you feel? I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> like a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Oh, I love that expression. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you know, there's another interesting thing that took place recently, um, I, you know, I, obviously I interact with the insiders a lot um, and enjoy that when I get the chance. And um, it's another curious thing that took place just uh, just uh, just recently, just in this last week. Um, yeah, so I was doing some work out in the black box, which is this wooden structure out in the east field. Uh, I went out there and uh, it's only black on the inside so far. <laughs> it, it, it may stay that way. But, but uh, I, you know, I was in there working on some, some uh, equipment um, and one of, the, one of the cameras that's there at the, at the what, that would be the northeast uh, corner of, of that, that structure uh, began to um, glitch. It started having some um, time jumps uh, when I was out there. I had to go back to the, to the uh, command center and grab a ladder and brought it out. And then when I got back, Yeah, I remember. Okay, so I was I was setting up to to install some additional cameras, and while I was there, uh, you know, I looked out and it was, it was daylight. I had plenty of time to do what I wanted to do, and um, it's as if the time got away from me. I uh, opened. I, I I had the door closed. I opened the door. I looked outside. It was pitch dark, and I couldn't really. <laughs> couldn't really account for uh, that much time having passed. Now, it could just be, again, uh, 
getting absorbed in what I'm doing. But it, it, there was a really uneasy feeling associated with that. And, you know, it's noteworthy that, that, um, that we had the, the, the jumping of the, of the time of the timer on that camera. So, you know, it, those, those kinds of things don't, don't reveal a lot to us, but they're the kind of coincidences that, that we pay attention to. Was that the night that so, you told me you were uneasy and that you came back? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was so taken aback by the fact that I fully expected to open that door and, and find that I had plenty of, plenty of daylight, plenty of time to do what I needed to do. And it really bothered me that it was that dark house that I didn't understand what happened. And I just had this, this really strong desire to get out of there. So are you alluding to the fact that you did witness missing time? I don't know how to describe it. You know, it's such a subjective thing, right? So um, I just know that I, as just as I described it, it's probably the best way to describe it. I was out there uh, working on things and I must have just uh, lost track of the time. Uh, that's not the, uh, you know, that's not the first time we've had uh, missing information or, 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 or actions that took place in certain periods of time that we couldn't prove happened or were there or weren't there. And, yeah. uh, and that's one of the key things that we've been measuring. And you'll see a lot of it come Tuesday night and onward that uh, time anomalies appear to be at the center of whatever is going on. Uh, you know, in the very first year I was out there, we measured that one signal. And the only explanation we could come up with for the signal was that uh, to create this signal across all of the radio spectrum would have taken an event that happened somewhere in the past and an event that happened somewhere in the future that were somehow connected to each other. And, and uh, it sounds crazy, but that's what the math showed. And so, I mean, we're really at a, uh, you'll see, time is very important. Uh, from what we discovered in the last year. Time anomalies. I mean, that's fascinating. And it opens, it opens up a whole new rabbit hole for these types of mysteries. And Eric, I think it is so cool that you're hanging out in the live chat with the insiders watching the camera feeds. And we definitely will talk about the insider project a little bit more later. Uh, Caleb, I did want to ask you, do you think that the veil between realms is thin or broken in areas of the ranch? Oh, I, <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess on the personal side and uh, bringing in like my, uh, like what my beliefs are and stuff, I think that it's either, yeah, thin for lack of a better term or, or something is for whatever reason, the ranch is this focal point where potentially you have some kind of effect like that. Yeah. That's just my personal belief, you know, and, and that's the only way I guess in my mind, I can, when thinking about some of the stuff that I can even make it make sense. Um, and just thinking of like my experiences and stuff. Yeah. That's one of the, some of these things that I, I've had happen. Yeah. That's kind of where I've gone to try and make it make sense, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, <laughs> from what we've uh, yeah what we've been seeing with the time anomalies and things and make it you know in the last year I've, I've thought about these different conversations I've had with the insiders where we're seeing the cameras and and time is messed up on the cameras like one like three cameras are showing what would be a correct time and then there's one camera that has been glitching all day and the time is off by a certain amount uh, the one day it was off by 33 minutes exactly from the other three cameras uh which you know stuck out to me for obvious reasons with an experiment that we did um and it was like that for like half a day and, and i i can't remember i think eric might have had to actually go in and fix it and figure out what the heck was going on with it and just basically reset the whole camera itself uh i can't remember though um we had a uh galen we had a time anomaly on friday measured with a brand new instrument and uh and there was the expert that ran the instrument had been working that type of instrument for uh, 20 something years she said i forget what uh, five years yeah and and, yeah. and she'd never seen it once in her entire career 
and we had this time anomaly occur on Friday. And uh, yeah, I'm really telling you, there's something to either something has learned how to spoof our clocks or something is actually messing with time uh, on the ranch. I don't know which one of those sounds more exotic. I, I remember uh, I, I came in as, as she was explaining that and got most of what was happening. And it made me think about what happened with Seco uh, at the beginning of last year uh, and, and what happened with his equipment. Yeah, that that was our head audio person. We Before we'd even started filming, he was doing some stuff. I have actual video footage on my phone of, yeah, we, of, we of him having all kinds of trouble with his audio bag, like, Anyway, you can explain, Caleb, if you want. Yeah, could you please go into more detail on that, if that's possible? Go ahead, Brian. No, it was just like he had every audio channel um, was having a problem. I mean, this is a a sound bag that, you know, has, I don't know, how many channels do you think that that has? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, each individual microphone that they have out there has its own frequency and its own channel. To pick up so they can record all those Probably individuals. 60, 32 or 64. I mean, it's got a lot of channels. Right. And every single one of them was being told that it was, that it, I mean, it basically was saying that there was a signal going to it when no mics were turned on and he couldn't get it to calibrate and things like that. I mean, it, he'd never seen anything like it in all his years. And he's been doing it for what, 20 plus years. And yeah. I'd have to go back and watch the video and see exactly what it was. But, um, I remember it just had him befuddled that he'd never seen anything like that messing with every single frequency channel in his entire bag that he couldn't even get, you know, any of the microphones to register. It was, it was what enough that? that it made him bring it to our attention. And, and, and what did I say just a few minutes ago that that signal that I measured the first year I was out there was across all of the frequencies. And the only way to do that is to have some kind of weirdness in time an event in the past, one in the future. And, and you know, think about what, what Brian just said. Seco's bag, our sound guy's bag, it got, covers multiple frequencies. Every frequency he could tune to was jammed. Yeah. Think about that. And, and Travis, it, it it's worth mentioning that where he was when that was happening. Was that down at Homestead too? No. No. It was what? right outside of your trailer. Right outside of yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. How about that? Yeah. yeah he, was right standing there. There. he was he was standing right there by the, the audio trailer. trailer. Yeah. I wonder how uh, was that this past year? This yeah, past yeah, it was this yeah. year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It was, it was, it was like, actually uh maybe uh, the day just before filming started. Yeah, it was prior yeah. to. And it so, was hammering every single channel on that thing. Is it is it Travis's trailer that usually attracts all this weird stuff more so than maybe other people's trailers? Is that well, what I'm, I'm there, understanding? So. I don't <laughs> I don't know what it is, honestly. I don't I don't think you can say it's because it's Travis's trailer or because of its location on the property or anything like that. I just think that was the trailer you know, whatever. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I you know, the trailer may have something to do with it, I think. Uh, you know, without revealing a lot of what's to come, I think that uh, there's some data that shows some interesting things about that location. Mm-hmm. Are we going to yeah. see that in season four of the Secret of Skinwalker Ranch? I hope. <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> I mean, all I can say, I don't know yet. I mean, I, we get to see it when you guys get to see it, really. And, uh, and to keep in mind, we filmed for a week for 42 and a half minutes. And, uh, and Eric, which uh, or, or Thomas One, did the math. And on how much of what we actually do gets on the show. And, and, and it's something like, you know, a fraction of a percent or something. Yeah. And, 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 About and 0. 0.87. Is, 0. 0.87. See, there you go. A percent. So, so not much. So, you know, there's 99 uh, more parts of it that, uh, uh, that you still haven't seen at a minimum. And, and, and that's the one thing that people have to realize. This is a scientific investigation. It's not a TV show, right? The TV show is the documentary effort of the scientific investigation. And so you can't see everything we do all that we do in a one hour show or really 42 and a half minutes or whatever. So uh, uh, there's a lot of it that I don't know you. And, and we, I haven't finished narrating the last three or four episodes. So I don't know what, what it's all going to air. <laughs> Well, see, that's why we have these types of conversations to fill in the gaps that so many people 
want to understand. And Travis, you mentioned time appearing to be at the core of the mystery there. And again, as mentioned, we're light years from having concrete proof of what's going on there. But from your wealth of scientific physics and engineering knowledge, projected upon everything that you've seen, heard and experienced on the ranch, can you be candid about any inner opinions that you've reached or theories that you tend to lean towards where you could hedge your bets regarding the fringe phenomenon? And most importantly, do you feel that you are seeing signs of a new type of physics being observed on the ranch? And if so, do you think it's indicating that it could open up our understanding of the manipulation of space time? Wow. Um, well, so what I will tell you is, uh, Eric and I have talked about this a lot, and we often say that this is one of the greatest opportunities we've ever had. And uh, it may turn out if, if the phenomena is doing the things that we seem to be measuring it doing, there is a, a something has a extra understanding of how the universe works than we do. Right. So if you want to call that new physics, fine. It's just, that's, I would say the physics is there. We just don't know it yet. Right. Um, but uh, what my, I don't know if speculation is the right word, but hypothesis that I've yet to learn, figure out how to test is, is that it is quantum mechanically based. Uh, and we understand now uh, from uh, new results in quantum physics experiments, quantum field theory, that the phenomena are quantum connected. And uh, the, the, the future and the past can have influence on other parts of time if it's quantum, if it's connected. Our brains are the most amazing quantum computers ever built. You know, the big multi-billion dollar quantum computer at Google, the Sycamore, has like 25 uh, quantum processors in it. Your brain has 10 to the 23 quantum processors in it. That's a one with 23 zeros after it. Think about that. And that's more sand than there are uh, uh, grains of sand on the beach. That's that's 10 times more stars than there are in the known universe. So, and that's in every human brain. And so we don't have a comprehension of what consciousness is and how it is connected to reality in the universe. So think about it from that perspective. Uh, people who haven't been looking at it from, from with that in mind, uh, they're just doing poor science and have done poor science uh, by leaving that part out. Reality is part of the universe. And if you don't study reality as that connection, that maybe it's the thing that holds the universe together, then, uh, you know, you've left a big piece out. And I think, yes, if we understand how it works, then we might understand why things can be connected in the future and in the past and in the present. And, and maybe not just across time, but across space as well, which would lead to space-time metric engineering like wormholes and warp drives and things of that nature. And that's what we all want at the end of the day is the warp drives. Yes, that's right. I'm, I'm ready for that. But <laughs> Eric, as another scientific mind, what can you tell us or what, what opinions or thoughts can you tell us about this question? You know, uh, lately I've been interested in the question of coincidence or the, the subject of coincidence. You know, I'm interested in things that can be described as random, or at least as far as we understand them. I know Travis relates really well to this subject as well. Um, you know, I've been looking at putting together uh, very, very simple measurement systems for looking at shifts in uh, the coincidence of what should be independent, completely random events. And uh, uh, the, the goal there is to see if, if any of those shifts accompany what, what we uh, classically called uh, high strangeness out here on the ranch. I know that's probably a direction you weren't expecting me to go, but uh, for some reason, I, I like, like it. I feel like talking about it. So um, I, I, I'm really hoping that Travis and I can put together an experiment that uh, where we can look back on our experience of say the day or, you know, the, the recent 24 hour period um, and look at the log data and say, have we seen any of those statistical shifts? Because, you know, when we talk about quantum mechanics, we, we can't have that discussion without talking about statistics. You know, that's at the heart of it. So um, that's really where my thoughts have been lately. Um, I hope that was a useful answer. 
<laughs> no, it was. Thank you. And Thomas, this next one is for you. And we're going to be shifting gears just a little bit. During this Brandon Fugel ownership era of the ranch, have any livestock, pets, or animals in general just vanished, never to show up again? Um, I'm not aware of, of anything vanishing. Um, you know, we've had a few animals that have died, um, but I'm not, a, I'm not aware uh, to my knowledge, we've had the correct count of cows and livestock leave the ranch that came. Um, so as far as our animals that have been here, you know, our dogs and, and that livestock that we've accounted for, I'm not aware of any losses in the last seven years that have, have come because of that. Okay. And Dragon, what about equipment from digging or construction gear through to sensors, cameras, or other technology? Has anything vanished without returning? <laughs> uh, for a time. Um, we, I don't know. Um, we, we did an experiment in season two that has Thomas still shaking his head. Where I, I knew that's where you were going. Everybody had to be thinking of that when she asked. You know, I, I knew it. Um, um, <laughs> you know, I don't know that it's ever going to play. Are we okay to talk about it? So, oh, um, we've, we've shared it publicly. It's okay. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, to try and do a little bit of a drilling experiment, we had a handheld, um, drill kit that came with these different bits that would sleeve onto themselves so that you could get more length as you went down into the ground. And then on the end was a, was a bit with a, you know, a diamond cutting head on it that actually would cut down in. And we were drilling out near Homestead 2 and drilling down and, and hit an area and went to put another section on, brought the drill up, and the, the, the tip was gone off of, of this bit. And so Thomas multiple times stuck it down in the hole. It could feel it. It felt like it was, you know, clinking to where it just wouldn't mesh up and, and connect. And we could never get it. You know, the day ended, we we put the things away, but we knew for a fact that that section of drill was not there, wasn't accounted for. That, that, so the next, keep in mind, hold on a minute. It was like what twenty feet deep, almost, yeah, right? Twenty feet down in the ground. And, and and this bit, if the bit isn't on the end of the drill, it will not drill a hole, right? right. And so we put several sections to make it longer, and so the bit was on the end because we drilled a hole. All right, yeah. now, sorry. Well, yeah. and it's also important to know that when we added lengths of pipe to this, you leave the existing pipe down there. You just uncouple the, the actual mm -hmm. auger off of it, add another piece on the top and put the auger on and then continue down. So mm -hmm. it's we it's not like we're pulling the pipe out of the ground each time and, and adding a length and putting it back down. We put the drill bit on one time and then from there, it just keeps working down. We never pull it out of the hole uh, while we're doing this. So it's fair to say that if that bit was ever on there, it should have still been down in that hole. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. we wouldn't have got twenty inch. I mean, we wouldn't have got twenty centimeters without the bit on the end. I mean, we were twenty feet down in the ground. He had cut, mm -hmm. pulled it out. These core samples, all this different kind of stuff that comes with it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, fast forward, we pulled it out, and the end of the bit wasn't on there. So we put the other stuff away. Went back the next day with a piece of digging equipment, an excavator, and dug right alongside the channel to where we had drilled to try and get that bit out. It was actually not our piece. You know, it was lent to us by a company. It was like a rental um, type of a thing. And as we dug down, we absolutely got, and we could see the trail. Um, you could see the, the channel that had been drilled by the drill all the way down to the point where it ended and where the bit should be sitting there. I mean, we're talking, what are they? Two foot sections, four foot sections. They were um, four feet. A four were, foot piece four, of, yeah. A four foot piece of pipe with, with a cutting blade on the end of it. Like that big around. Yeah. Jeez. And we, we saw where the, where the hole in the earth was and it was not there. I mean, we dug right along. It looked like, you know, you, you could see exactly where it was. And we all lost our minds because we knew for a fact we hadn't pulled it out of the bag. We hadn't pulled it out of the ground. We searched everywhere, put it away. And it was just one of those mysteries. What in the hell happened to, you know, this piece of equipment? And it was driving us all crazy. Um, Thomas was questioning his own sanity, whether or not he's like, I did, did I pull it out of the ground? What the hell? So we all 
searched and searched and searched. Well, because this was a rental piece, um, we knew, you know, it, it was stored in one of the production trailers and, you know, we know for a fact, cause I helped put it away. I know that that bit did not get put in the bag when we finished that experiment. And a few days later, they opened up the bag and that piece that should have been down in the ground that we pulled out and wasn't on the end was back in the bag again, had reappeared. You're so, joking. No, no. A little bit. Hey, no <laughs> guys, you know what that's reminded me of just, just now it occurred to me. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. Uh, in the, in the anecdotal record, there's a, there's a uh, description of um, the former residents here um, coming home and unloading groceries from, you know exactly where I'm going, unloading groceries from the, the shopping bags, putting them into the pantry or into the shelves or wherever, turning around and finding that all of that was back in the bags. Mm-hmm. That's a that's the same story, guys. Yeah, I know, yeah. right? But but we we didn't make it up. We saw it. All of us. We got oh, on camera. I mean, we filmed us doing it. Caleb got mud from head to toe running that auger, and so did Thomas. And uh, we know that it was there. I mean, we drilled a hole. And- that's that's the point that I wanted to bring up. Was it wasn't just like the five of us standing out there doing this. There was how many other people sitting there watching us do this. I'm sure they weren't the most thrilled you know, about just sitting there watching us drill for however many hours. Or try to every- can reconnect the bit because we couldn't yeah. we couldn't get the bit back up. Yeah, and every single person out there was like, where's it at? It wasn't just the five of us. It was how many people? At least cameras. It, yeah. it, it was all, yeah, it was all recorded. Not a single person re- knows what the heck, where that bit, drill bit went. Not, and it's not like one of them sat there and ferreted it off. You know, we everyone was watching, and, and yeah, again, so. it's recorded. It was on. It, yeah. That that has perplexed us since we did that, and and it was at some point you just quit thinking about it because because it'll make your mind crazy. explode. <laughs> right. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out tomorrow that we didn't even have this conversation. Don't yeah, say right? that to me, Eric. Yeah, don't right. don't do it. No, <laughs> please. So yes, yeah, in answer to the question, that's one example. But um, you know, it's been documented and talked about. We've had stuff equipment failures out the wazoo with all different kinds of our own equipment as well as professionals that have brought their equipment out as you know on top of it but as far as stuff disappearing that one that one still has us all scratching our head wondering what in the world could have happened there and i know that some of you have even what was that thomas i was gonna say this is the part of the ranch that drives me absolutely crazy is there are so many times now i'm horrible about putting things back where they go Okay, so <clears throat> that's that's the first problem right there is, is I think oh, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll just leave it there. I won't have to drag it back out. So that you add that part of my personality to the mix. But I'll tell you, there have been more times than I could ever remember where I will show up and I'll be like, I swear that I left that over there. Or, you know, or I'll say, I, I swear I left it. Mm-hmm. And I find it someplace completely different and I will scan my memory. And this has happened. This is, this has happened so many times. I quit even, uh, I just assume at this point, Oh, I must've taken it over there and I don't remember, but it's those kind of things that drive me crazy because it makes me always question like, um, I, and there's been a number of the times where like I, I can, I have the actual memory of driving it over and putting it away. So that I have the memory of, but then I find it somewhere else and I have no memory of how it got over there. But because of the way that I am with my tools, I I can never know for sure. And that's the kind of stuff that drives me absolutely wrong. So I can vouch for the fact that Tom never puts his tools back where they go, which means the last place that bit should have been is back in that bag. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 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 <laughs> yeah i think that blue toolbox of mine probably has about 50 percent of the tools in it i don't know where the rest of them uh, are. i wouldn't say 50 i think yeah. you're estimating high it's okay I, i'm just gonna say right there just for i am that way with my tools i'm not that way with other people's tools if it's somebody else's i'm pretty good about making sure it gets back 
So, so the ranch is now covered with cameras, which are running 24-7 using visual and night vision cameras. And what some fans and new viewers don't know is that these camera feeds are available for everyone to watch online via the Insider Project web portal, where several of you are hanging out in the live chat periodically. So, Caleb, can you tell us if any highly unusual anomalies have been captured on camera yet by Insider members? And can you describe the most outstanding examples so far? Oh, yes. Um, it, you know, it, it, that's the hard thing is, is what are we catching, right? Is it something that's actually like what we could consider like out there that we can't explain? But yes, there's been times where the insiders have have seen something that's, you know, brought they brought it to our attention and and we'll sit down and we'll go through it. And, and there's actually been time, a really cool um, incident was, uh, well, uh, Eric actually got on and was running through some of these videos with uh, a bunch of them a couple weeks ago. And, and the more he was looking into it, the more he started seeing things that he was going, I, this isn't making sense. And, and they were videos from Homestead too. And, and so that's actually been a really cool and fun thing that we've been able to do is he'll, you know, we'll, we'll go through this stuff and with the insiders and, and try to answer their questions and, and, and go through it with them. And a lot of times it's like, we know what it was. It, there is an explanation for what they were seeing. And a lot of times it's viewers or insiders that are newer and they don't really know what they're looking at yet. But there, again, there's been times where yet they've, I think they've seen something and it definitely raises some interest, but to say that it's for certain, you know, some kind of unknown phenomena or, or something, I, I, I don't think we can say that, but we are definitely having, they are definitely catching things that raise some interest at times. And, and, uh, other circumstances need to be brought in uh, in some of those occasions too, where it's multiple things going on at the same time, and we're and we start scratching our heads, going, "Okay, what the heck's going on?" Um, so, and, and yeah, that's been fun. Uh, I, we get on there and talk with them all the time, um, and that's kind of where we've had some interesting things happen too. Like Eric was showing the insiders some stuff of, like two weeks ago, and. I and completely unprompted. I had no idea he was even on there, and I jumped on, and we kind of had one of those kind of weird circumstances happen, and with in in regards to what he was showing, and yeah, it was, yeah, it was just crazy. It's definitely great for keeping tabs for you when you're away from the ranch, uh, too. I mean, don't you think so, Travis? Uh, yeah. So. Um... You know, I'm not there as much in the winter. I've only been there a few times since, uh, I guess, the last day of October. Uh, you know, like I was there last week, and then a few weeks back I was there. But uh, it's I can uh, log on, and I do it random when I have an extra five minutes or ten minutes and, and chat with the folks on, on there. And uh, it's really interesting because there's always somebody on. Uh, you know, some one of the members is some – there's handfuls at least always there yeah. looking at the cameras, talking about something they're seeing. And uh, then they always have questions, you know, and I'm always, when I have time, I, li I like to do that. And also I'll do lectures and stuff, you know, every now and then. Uh, but it's really good way. If I want to just see what the ranch is looking like today, if, sometimes I just get a, a feeling, that, Hey, I ought to look at, you know, something. And, and that's happened in the past. And we've actually discovered things that we weren't expecting to see where I just, you know, randomly decided to look at the cameras and found something. And uh, so you never know. And I think it's great that we've got a lot of other eyes and ears, you know, tuned into it. And because we can't see all of it and watch all of it all the time. And it's great that other people are helping us out with that. I uh, I run the feed on my big TV when I'm doing homework or show prop because it, it really is quite hypnotizing. And Eric, for those who haven't heard about the Insider Project, there's a lot more than just camera feeds. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about how you have used it to connect with others and why people should become members? Sure. I mean, there's a there's a lot of content and it's a growing library that we curate on the site, you know, um, 
some of what we do as Travis has, Travis has mentioned uh, one of the real value adds is, is, you know, where, where he has the opportunity to uh, elucidate maybe a, a, a concept in physics and relate it to what's going on at the ranch, which I think is a great ad. Um, uh, there's also, there's also some work that we've been doing where we either relate or perhaps do an inter interview type of situation. I've done uh, some work with Caleb, for example, where we go out in the field and we, we stand in the places where things have happened and say, okay, now let's, let's, let's walk back through this. Let's see what we can remember as we stand in the spot and talk about the experiences that we've had. That's one way. Um, you know, I don't know if you've, Christine, I, I don't know if you've mentioned also this remarkable framework that we have, this, uh, the spreadsheet, which is this sort of comprehensive record of uh, interesting to anomalous things that have happened in the live stream, uh, things that have been either seen or heard, and even things that have happened in the personal space of the people who are watching the feed, because there is this, of course, this narrative of the um, at a distance effect. Um, the word escapes me right now. Um, <laughs> Hitchhiker. Thank you. <laughs> Up all night. <laughs> well, I, I housed the spreadsheet on my uh, Discord yeah. server in the beginning, and uh, it, it really, I mean, it's incredible that anyone who watches the feed can kind of point out, I just saw this really weird thing at this time, yeah. check it out. And I think overall that, like, how has that been helpful for you? All of these extra eyes that are looking at the feeds, how has it helped you with the progression of your research, especially well, with figuring out where to place new cameras? Well, sure. You know, I mean, I mean, this has clearly surpassed what I originally had in mind. You know, years and years ago, we talked about just getting some more human eyes on the on on the ranch. You know, it became clear as we were adding more and more, more and more of these cameras. Um, you know, it's it's obviously not a job fit for a single human being. We need it. it it's it, you can watch a lot of uh, rocks and sky and trees and cows and bugs and birds. And, you know, you can uh, desensitize and potentially miss those fleeting events. I mentioned earlier that some of the events are like a frame in duration, one one thirtieth of a second. Um, and so the original vision was, you know, to have a, a group of consummate viewers uh, watching and, and helping to to data log. But what we have now is so much more than that. You know, th th this is all sort of organically sprung out of the out of the ether, really, just uh so much in the way of contribution. People are going out and they're finding interesting research papers. They're, they're uh, contributing works. You know, people have actually taken the initiative to write their ideas, their theories, uh, experimental suggestions. It's just such an incredible ecosystem. So, uh, you know, and you mentioned Discord, uh, you know, in, in combination with the site, the Discord membership, you know, that aspect of it is fantastic. It's extremely interactive. We do a lot of uh, live uh, discussions, screen shares. I could go on and on. You're probably tired of hearing me talk. <laughs> I've been talking all day. No, we enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, a bit of fun now, but then again, it, it is a serious part of the mystery if a portal exists and if you all had to take a vote on where you could all agree that the location of the portal is where do you think that would be dragon that one's for you wow where the location on the property of where a portal might be mm -hmm. um well i mean i'll go to the just the spots where we've seen things that kind of lead us in that direction whether it be you know homestead two or you know the triangle area i would i would have to say that those two areas have been the ones where we've got the most evidence if you will or um, you know, fingerprints associated with that type of thing. Um, you know, given the strangeness that we've experienced, the the evidence that's been collected from a data standpoint and things of that nature, I would say um, the triangle area um, and that Mesa area associated with the triangle and then Homestead too would be, that's where I would say, I was hoping you would say, if a portal opened up, who would be the first one through? And I'd be like, hey, I'm going. I, I think I'd have to fight well, Eric for the chance. No, <laughs> no, no strings. I think we're all roping for it, dude. No, <laughs> no. I, I'm serious. I think Eric and I would be battling to, to dive through that thing. So, well, I think uh, I'll beat all of you, and I'll be going first. With the, okay. with the backpack of ramen, though, I, I can't leave without snacks. I get really cranky when I'm hungry. 
Okay, mm -hmm. fair enough. So that's pretty important. But uh, Travis, do you think that the triangle area above it could be a warp in space time? I mean, like even just thinking about it, just musing about it. It's, it's something. Uh, it's absolutely some kind of phenomena that we don't quite understand what it is yet. That is one of the working hypotheses, and we're, we have done experiments to try and test that. Uh, we, well, we did test that in various ways. The success of the test you'll see in, uh, you know, the coming weeks. And I, I, I don't want to tell you too much more than that, but um, I, 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 it's something is all I can say. There's, there is something above the triangle. All of you guys are leaving me on edge with all of these little like teasers for the new season. I'm just like, I just want to watch it now. I when I was interviewing Caleb, I had said season five instead of season four because I felt like I had already seen bits and pieces of it. And I'm like, I'm ready for the next season already. But I, I've just heard time and time again from you and from Brandon as well that this season is so far the best season that has been released. So I'm like, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, Thomas. If you think a portal could be one place on the ranch, where do you think it would be? I think I think Dragon A nailed it spot on. Um, if I had to choose between, you know, it's tough. We have we had data that showed with Ariel with Rabbi Ariel Sadak that possible. I mean, I don't even know what a portal looks like, yeah. uh, so it's hard to say. But I mean, I'd say that if I've ever come close to experiencing one, it probably would have been there right in front of Homestead 2 with that uh, thermal anomaly, uh, just feeling what that felt like walking in and physically feeling that go from inside out. There was something there. I don't know. But but then knowing things that are going to potentially show coming up um, makes me pause. I, I honestly don't know if I could choose between Homestead 2 and the Triangle. Yeah. I mean, I, honestly, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe it's a transient portal that moves around. I mean, how would it lock itself to the set of coordinates? That's what That's... I find so mind-boggling about it. Caleb, I think <laughs> you're feeling the same way, right? You don't That's, know exactly that. That's exactly what I was thinking, uh, that it's transient, that we've, you know, things that we've seen that it's transient. So I think it's interesting that you said that. Thank you. Now, there is always been speculation that some branch of the United States government or military has been keeping an eye on things at the ranch. But what I would like to ask is if any of you feel that at some point a foreign government entity has shown overt or covert interests in the ranch. Who wants to answer that one? Stay tuned. <laughs> Can't do yeah, that to I, me again. I think, I think we all kind of don't need to discuss that one. It's a it's an uncomfortable question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, okay. So then, on a scale of one to ten, how shocking and eye opening is season four? Uh, ten to the twenty three. <laughs> <laughs> or ten to the thirty three. Oh, oh boy. Oh hey, there, oh. Good, there you go. No, you know what. Definitely a lot happened. So hopefully if it's portrayed, I haven't seen any of it. So, but I know the things that took place were definitely shocking to all of us. And if people understand that it's real and that it happens, then it will be very shocking to them as well. I think Eric is the only one of us besides Brandon that's seen the rough cuts yet. So uh, I mean, that's you've seen true. several of them, right, Eric? You know, in years past, I haven't even watched <laughs> any of, of the final part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, well, with, with 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 certain exceptions, when my arm is twisted behind my back and I have to sit in a kitchen uh, or something, yeah, no, that, 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 was, that was my that was my favorite things. Kristen, <laughs> just a quick little fun thing was we did at our Phenomicon event. One of the things was you know people can have dinner while we watch one of the episodes and we talk about it. And we're sitting there watching this episode, and I remember Eric looks over. He's like, you yeah. know. It was pretty good. I'm like, yeah, you should probably watch the show because he, he had not seen it. He literally oh, was God. watching it for the first time with these people. It was fantastic. <laughs> I might watch that. Them boys look like they know what they might be doing. Right? right. Yeah. No, so, uh, yeah, and I've, I've seen the material. I, I, so I haven't seen the, the material from the uh, from the previous years. I know that it's good quality. I've seen you know, what the aesthetic looks like and just the look and feel is amazing. We know we're dealing with guys who are the best in the business. Of course, um, they're 
Yeah, I, and, and, and I do not envy them their job. You know, we cited how much they have to pare things down and make it all fit into that 42 minutes or whatever it is. Um, this year, I've taken a different approach. You know, I've looked at the rough cut material, uh, offering some suggestions here and there. And I got to tell you, it's jarring. It's it's sometimes hard to believe that all that happened. And yet I know for a fact that it did. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't see it. But when I'm doing the narration bits, I, I'm, I'm going through beginning to the end of an episode, plugging in the, uh, you know, the little transition sound bites. Mm-hmm. And I'm going, wow, I'd forgotten that happened. And then, dang, that happened that day. Too. That also happened. Yeah. And, I mean, and it's like this, this, this last summer was just something else. I mean, it was absolutely jarring, I think is the right way to say it, Eric. You know, Pete has a great, Pete Kelsey has a great expression. Uh, you know, I said, not that know. one. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Not no. his number one. Not his number one. <laughs> We we can't say that one. We can't say yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. All right. Uh, you know, now I want to say that one. Um, <laughs> you <can get> it <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, he's got some good one. Pete's got some zingers, but, but but that's not what was coming to mind, guys. You know, I was, you know, I've heard him say this a few times and I and, and I, I thought to myself, boy, it's probably true of this. I, I've watched an episode or the rough cut of an episode, and I said, "Oh my God, people are going to have kittens when they see this." What? Yeah, it's an expression he uses. <laughs> okay, because I'm like, I love kittens, but I don't know how you can have more kittens. Uh yeah. So, I, I, yeah, it's just I can I can anticipate what the response is going to be. I see I see how the events as they truly happened and how they've been cut are going to set up the dominoes in the minds of many people, and those dominoes are coming down. Well, you've all taken a job at Skinwalker Ranch for different reasons, but what is one thing that you love about the job that keeps you there, even when experiencing the darker aspects of the phenomenon? Thomas? These these four guys right here. Yeah, that, that was my answer too, Thomas. Yeah, mine Absolutely. too, mine too. You're 100%. looking at it. Yep. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all of you agree? It's, yeah, we're it's, all, it's, it's, it's the like, Skinwalker we're Ranch like family. We're, we're all, I mean, we're so... We become so uh, connected and close, and uh, spent so much time in the in the foxhole together, so to speak. That I mean, we 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 finish each other's sentences. Uh, you know, it's just we're like brothers. I think that when you go through life altering events, I mean, these things have changed your life and the way that you see things. You you grow this bond that no one else can understand but you guys. Because no one has gone through the things that you have. And I think that is something that is so beautiful. And I'm so happy to hear that not only on the TV show, you guys are friendly, but you're also legitimately really close in real life as well, which is something that I absolutely love seeing. And when I talk to you guys, it it really does seem that way. And and Christina, on top of that, you, you can have experiences with people and they can still suck. Um, but, but these guys, like I'm, I'm I'm speaking, I'm speaking to the caliber of these four men right here. Like, like it's, it's down to their cores. Like I've, I've had experience with people that I never want to have an experience with again. It didn't draw me any closer. Like, you know, piss off. I don't want to be around you ever again type of a thing. And so, yes, we've experienced things and we've worked together on things, but I will talk to the caliber and the absolute you know, nature of these men as men. And, and that's really where the bond comes in. These guys are, are incredible human beings from top to bottom. Well, I have have one final question for you all. Have any of you while being out and about in public shopping, being approached with some mind boggling information about the ranch, maybe from local tribal members or even fans, what can, like, what could you share with us? Dragon? Um, there's been multiple, you know, times, especially in the basin, um, where people will approach you and talk about where, you know, they grew up nearby or something like that and had experiences. I think the coolest thing though, and I think each of us has had this experience where people will approach us and talk about things that maybe happened to them many years ago, or as a child or something that they were previously ashamed to talk about because it was looked at as so strange and that they didn't want to voice those things because they'd be looked at as like they were crazy or making things up, but they held it to their core that they knew what they had witnessed or what they had experienced. 
And now they're willing to talk about it and want to share it and have been able to talk about it and thanking us for bringing this topic more to light so that they don't feel like they're kooky talking about what they saw and what they witnessed, you know, as a young person or something like that. But yeah, I mean, I've heard, <laughs> we've all heard some fantastic stories. I mean, some real fantastic stories where we just nod our head and it's like, wow, that's pretty crazy. Um, so, you know, but my favorite thing is, is it indeed that is like people, their appreciation for us bringing these topics to light and making it a little bit more mainstream to where they don't feel like, you know, they have to keep themselves quiet and not talk about things. Travis. Well, it's, I, I love every bit of that, that, like Dragon just said, but one of the things that really sort of humbles me is, uh, uh, or, and I really appreciate is when, when young, uh, maybe high school or going into college students uh, ask me, you know, or tell me, hey, I started studying engineering or I started studying physics or, or my son is doing better in, in science since he started watching your show it's inspired him or inspired her or, you know, whatever that, you know, I had, there was a, a girl from uh, Utah who came to Huntsville just so she'd go to the university that I went to. Uh, mm -hmm. And she reached out to me when she's here. I'm still, I'm trying to get her an internship, you know, uh, with one of the companies in town. And, and uh, you know, there have been people that, that just say those kinds of things. And, and if we're inspiring that, which is actually deep, deep to our core is to help make the world better than it was when we started. And, and, and if this is helping people understand something, feel better about something or or even inspire them to, you know, be something more themselves, that that to me is just it's well worth it. It's all it's all worth it. Thomas, what about yourself? Yeah, I'll, I'll say amen to what Dragon and Travis said. I mean, I've had I've had no less than four different teachers reach out to me across the United States that have told us that. <clears throat> they use our show as uh, the science material in their class. They watch our show in their class and they, and they're thanking us for inspiring the students. And, and I'd say, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's, it means a lot. And it also, you know, I feel privileged to be in a position. I, I get approached. I mean, at this point, it's hundreds of times where people um, because of the show have, have seen us as experts in this field, which is, you know, I don't have a science background, but being around these two gentlemen right here has inspired me a lot uh, in the sciences. But because of, of our position here, um, have felt safe enough to share their experiences. And I feel like it's given me the opportunity to um, maybe have a wider view of things than I would have otherwise had. Because uh, when, when you have somebody who's a mayor of a town or or leader of a, of a uh, religious group, an ecclesiastical leader, people who are really well-grounded, that are very credible, that are sharing with you experiences that have happened to them. Um, you know, I can, I can put some stock into those things um, as far as they really perceive that those things happened. And, and so I just feel privileged to be in this because of the amount of information that I've gotten uh, that that maybe helps me see this world in a different way than maybe a lot of other people just by the volume of of experiences that have been brought to me. I, I just feel blessed and privileged to be in this position. Well Eric? said. Did I hear my name? <laughs> yes, Eric. What about yourself? Wake up, Eric. <laughs> I'm doing. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> so. You, you know, we have a we have a discourse with people from around the world now. Um, that's that's really interesting. Um, you know, we're talking about viewers of the public facing work and also the insiders, uh, you know, members who reach out from the other side of the globe um, and uh, everywhere in between. And, you know, it just it, it confirms something that I think we knew going into this, and that is that. Um, it's more than just curiosity, but there's a yearning that is universal. It goes around this, around this globe. Um, and as has been said, the comfort level that people have found in our community uh, of vocalizing things that might be a bit speculative um, is a comfort level that they haven't found perhaps in other circles, in other circumstances. Um, 
to to architect that, to put that together, and and you know engineer a circumstance where people are um, at ease with one another, even coming you know crossing cultural boundaries. Just think about that. A, a, a completely different formative years experiences, and they're coming together and talking about things. Uh, you know the themes and the memes touched upon in our work. That is remarkable to watch. It's remarkable to participate in. You know, uh, Travis was talking about something that's really important to me. You know, he spoke of uh, young uh, people who are maybe trying to decide what they want to do in life, being so inspired that, you know, they're willing to travel across the country to to, to study in the sciences. And in, and in that case, that was really cool, Travis, the the girl who came to, as a, to Alabama to study. The other side of that, or an other side of that, is, you know, people maybe my age or older, who have said they've rediscovered an excitement, a love of learning because of the programming uh, that's going out as well as the interaction through the inter insider program. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't get any better. It doesn't. Uh, and last but not least, Caleb, tell us your thoughts. Um, obviously, I got to echo everything that's kind of been said. Um, but I think some of the biggest ones for me has been uh, seeing the things where families are coming together uh, because of the show. You know, we, we've, we've been told stories and, and, and or received messages from like parents and, or grandparents or something talking about how they're actually able to actually sit down with people in their family again and, and watch the show together. And, and it's rekindling those relationships um, because of the things that they're seeing and um, I, I think that's one of the big ones for me is if, if we're able to bring families together like that um, and, you know, give some kind of commonality between, say, a, a father and his teenage kids, you know, uh, think about that relationship, you know, how important that is, especially in those years. Um, and then <laughs> most of the time I can think of in the last couple of years that I've been like, say, recognized was when I was in uniform and I was sitting there at first going, am I about to get in a fight with somebody because the way they're looking at me, like, do they just hate cops? I'm like, oh, crap, here we go. <laughs> you know, um, but then I find out that they're like, oh, you know, they recognize me from the show and stuff. And so it, it's been neat for sure. But um, I think if we're able to, you know, inspire and bring people together and, and they move forward in life and things. I, I think that's, that's a good thing. And uh, as long as we can keep doing that, I think we're on the right track. Well, I want to thank all of you guys so much for spending the time with us today. I am so grateful and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the new season and continuing to follow your research. I do want to say thank you all for being so hardworking and inspiring. And as Brandon says, you are doing singular compelling research work on the most mysterious ranch on the planet. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thanks, Christina. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.